Okay, in order to have uh, a deep understanding of conservation laws, in order to be able to really dig deep and understand what particles should appear where and when, uh, it's important that you have a total understanding of all particles. So if we think about it, all particles are split into two groups. We've got fundamental particles, and we've got non-fundamental. Now then, our fundamental particles are made up of two groups. We've got leptons and we have exchange particles. Now our non-fundamental particles are hadrons and our hadrons are made of quarks. So our hadrons are made of quarks. Now then, so there's four groups. Leptons, which are fundamental particles. Exchange particles, which again are fundamental. They're non-fundamental and made of quarks. They're called hadrons. And our hadrons are then split into two more groups. So we've got baryons, and mesons. Now then, it's absolutely essential that you're able to look at each of the four groups and know how to characterise a particle that's in that group and how to use conservation laws to predict which particle will appear where. So if I focus first on leptons, so I'll focus first on leptons. Now then, there are really just three leptons you need to worry about. There's the electron, the muon, and the neutrino. Now then, the electron has a charge of minus one, the muon has a charge of minus one, and the neutrino has no charge, but they all have a lepton number equaling one. Now then, the leptons also have corresponding antiparticles. So as well as having the electron, the muon and the neutrino, you've also then got the antiparticles. The positron, the anti-muon and the anti-neutrino. So these have the opposite charge but they also have the opposite lepton number. The lepton number equals minus one. So uh, a positron has a lepton number of minus one because it's an anti-lepton, okay? Now those six leptons are all we really need to worry about. Sometimes we have to think about the fact that in an equation the neutrino might be a muon neutrino if the particle we're talking about has been a muon. So leptons, electron, muon, neutrino, these two have a minus charge, this one's got no charge, they all have a lepton number of one, but antileptons have a lepton number of minus one. The other particles are exchange particles. Now exchange particles, we've just got four for the four fundamental forces, okay? So for the strong nuclear force, we have the gluon, okay? So for the strong nuclear, we've got the gluon. We've also got um, the graviton for gravity. We've got the weak nuclear, which we've talked about, the W boson, um, and the Z. Uh, and we've also got the virtual photon for the electrostatic force, okay? So we've also got the virtual photon. Okay, so when we've got uh, Feynman interactions with two electrons or proton electron and so forth, then we've got a virtual photon, electrostatic repulsion or attraction, the weak nuclear interaction, the gluons, the strong nuclear force, and of course the graviton for gravity. Okay? Now, the other group, we have to look at the hadrons. Now, the hadrons, non-fundamental particles containing quarks. Now, the first group are baryons. Baryons...
they all have three quarks. Now then, the most common baryons are the proton and the neutron. Now if you think about what quarks are, the most important quarks we know about are up, down and strange. Now the up quark has a charge of two thirds, plus two thirds, and the down quark has a charge of minus a third. And the strange quark has a charge of minus a third as well. So the proton, in order to get its positive charge, it must be up, down, pardon me, up, because it's two thirds, minus a third, plus two thirds, gives us plus one. We normally write it up, up, down. Now in order to get the neutron to be a zero charge, then we would say it must be up, which is two thirds, minus a third, minus a third, which is up, down, down. Okay. Now then, these baryons are made up of three quarks, not antiquarks, quarks. That means they've got a baryon number. And the baryon number equals one. So every baryon, every baryon, not just protons and neutrons, every baryon, which is made up of three quarks, which all baryons are, as long as they are not anti-quarks, they've got a baryon number of one. However, for example, the anti-proton, which is anti-up, anti-up, anti-down, made up of three anti-quarks, must have a baryon number equal to minus one because it's an anti-baryon. But you'll come across lots and lots of different particles like the sigma particle and so forth. All baryons all have three quarks. Three quarks or three anti-quarks, never a mixture. Now the final group are the mesons. Now the mesons are made of quark, plus an antiquark. Now then, a quark plus an antiquark always. They don't have a lepton number, they don't have a baryon number, they're just made up of a quark and an antiquark. Now the two most popular ones at AS level, although we will come across others, the two most popular are the pion and the kion. Okay, this is called a pion and this is called a kion. Now a pion does not have strangeness, and a kion does. And that makes remembering them very, very straightforward because we remember up, down, strange. So as long as we remember those three quarks, then the quark structure of these two is very straightforward. So we could have pi plus, pi minus, or pi zero. And we could have k plus, k minus or k zero. And we just got to think about what possible combinations could make them. Now, if these have got no strangeness, then that means they've got no strange quark in them. So in order to make, with a quark and an anti-quark, in order to make this plus charge without strangeness, it must be up, anti-down, because it's plus two thirds, Minus minus a third, if you like, or plus a third, gives us plus one. Now to get minus, it must be an anti-up, down. Because it's minus two thirds, minus a third, gives us minus. To get zero, there's many ways we could get zero. We could have up, anti-up, down, anti-down. We could even have strange, anti-strange, because that has no strangeness in it. So they are all the possible quark combinations which would give us the pion. Now the kion, similarly, these do have strangeness in them. So in order to get a plus charge and strangeness, we need an up quark, because it gives us the big two thirds we need. So it must be up, anti-strange, in order to give us the strangeness we're after. To get a minus, it must be minus, anti-up, strange. Now to get zero, remember we need that strange quark, but it's going to be zero, so it can't have an up quark in it because it's too big, the charge is too big, so it must be strange, 
anti-down or anti-strange down. They're all the possible quark combinations which will give us the mesons. Remember, no baryon number, no lepton number. So to summarise, all particles are split into two groups. Fundamental, which aren't made of anything smaller that we know of yet. Leptons, electron, muon, neutrinos, all have a lepton number of one. Anti-electron, anti-muon, uh, anti-electron or anti-muon neutrino, lepton number of minus one. Remember, the electron and the muon have a charge of minus one. Neutrino's got no charge. Exchange particles, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, gravity and the electrostatic repulsion and attraction. Uh, so we've got the glue on the W minus and W plus and Z boson, the virtual photon and the graviton. Hadrons. Hadrons are non-fundamental. They're made of something smaller. They're made of quarks. Two groups, baryons and mesons. Baryons are made of three quarks. A baryon containing three quarks has a baryon number of one. If it's three antiquarks, it's a baryon number of minus one. And mesons are a quark-antiquark pair. Pions have no strangeness, and kions do.